cab um, issue. And um, you came back after a call from the leader of government business, um, Honorable Matthew Numa, and you, you resigned your position. Let's talk about that. First, um, what was this thing that led you to um, resigning your position? Well, I believe that um, my powers under the Constitution of Sierra Leone, especially Section 93, that gives Parliament the power to set up committees, although the Constitution established some committees, and um, gives the mandate to those committees chaired by chairmen whose names together with committee members will be read in the chamber and they will be approved by members of parliament to run those committees for the session because parliamentary committees are sessional. Mm -hmm. So I believe that the responsibilities enshrined in section 93 gives me power to investigate, to unearth and to look at things that are not in the interest of the state. Mm -hmm. Equally, those investigations, as per the Constitution, should lead to the, 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 the to, uh, to um, legislations. Mm -hmm. And for me, such a work I is an enviable job. It's a job that you should treat with respect, and it's a job that you should treat with utmost seriousness. So giving me a committee as big as transparency and accountability, I have to say thank you, first of all, to the leadership for considering me, because the committee in itself has never been given to any first timer. Mm. It is a committee reserved for either long serving members of parliament, mostly chief whips of the ruling parties. Giving me that committee, I, 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 I took it as a responsibility given to me to discharge and show how transparency and accountability should be. Mm. Because since I, since I entered parliament, since I sworn that oath, I think I've been part of the parliamentary face that stands for accountability and transparency in this country and in parliament. I have on several occasions asked for things that no parliamentarians are, are, have, have done or have asked for in the past. And giving me that committee, I believe you are telling me that we want you to go a step further. So looking at the standing order, standing order 42 gives me the power as the chairman to run the committee as the speaker does in the sitting in chambers. And the work started with me setting up my team I start with the members. We had to develop an activity plan. We agreed on the activity plan. We moved the motion. It was adopted. So we started with the, the, the mining companies. We started with NME and the lease, well, the, the, the supposed bid or supposed listing of King O mm -hmm. for the Tonkolili mines. And the leadership at that time gave me a complete free hand. Thank, thank God to AYV. AYV gave us a, 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 a real time viewing to everybody in this country, within and outside Sierra Leone, to understand exactly what was going on in parliaments, how parliamentary committees work. And for the records, I think even before I became a member of parliament, mm -hmm. the Committee on Transparency and Accountability was almost dormant, was almost dead. They were receiving funding from European Union and other agencies that were keen on accountability. They stopped because the committee was almost more reborn. I took the committee in less than a month, every Sierra Leonean, both within and outside Sierra Leone, was enthusiastic. They were energetic about parliament and parliamentary mm -hmm. activity because now they knew that a committee is called Transparency and Accountability. And that committee probes into issues that have to do with accountability, financials, procurement, and the like. So the leadership gave me free hand in looking at Kingo. And when it comes to SALCAP, it became a completely different issue. At every point of the sitting, we either have to stand down to go and receive instructions either from the speaker or to go and receive instructions from the leader of government business or to go and receive instruction from a deputy leader who is a member of the information committee because we are looking at the ministry and of information the, yeah, because i was just going to see if the deputy leader um deputy speaker in parliament who is a member of uh, the information um, committee in parliament and you were looking into issues that have to do with um, the ministry of information and salcab how did that pan out well what happened is because I realized that the, the Committee on Transparency and Accountability is a cross-cutting committee. Our activity goes beyond any particular committee. Mm. We are not a specific ministry-driven committee. For example, the Committee on Information and Communication is a ministry-driven committee. They look at issues surrounding or around the Ministry of Information and Communication. They mm. cannot go beyond that scope. Whereas two committees in Parliament, or three committees in Parliament, Transparency, 
PAC and finance mm -hmm. goes beyond just their agency. In fact, transparency and PAC don't have limits. limits. We mm -hmm. can look at anything. So because I was looking at the Ministry of Information, I have called the, the, the Committee on Information and Communication. We had two mock sessions. We agree on the, 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 the TOR for that meeting. We agree on the scope. We looked at everything. Everything was analyzed. We planned it. So it was agreed as to what steps we are going to take. Mm. So the sitting on that day on the Salkab issue was a joint committee sitting between the Committee on Information and Transparency. But however, it was Transparency Committee that had the process because it was not because we initiated it and it was part of our activity plan, mm -hmm. but because the matters we were looking at had financial implications. So the deputy leader being a member of the committee saw the, the, the actions of the Transparency Committee and the way we intend investigating the Salkab issue as in variance with what they or what has been done in the past. Because mm -hmm. in the past, when you call people, or currently when you call agencies, they will go, the agency will just explain exactly what they are doing. At the end of the day, members of parliament will only ask questions on what was explained to them. Mm -hmm. In this instance, we had researched as Transparency Committee. I have done my homework, so I was in a better place to ask critical questions and to ask questions that they deem, both the leader of government business, the deputy leader, and the leadership of the SIPP, they deem, as embarrassing the, 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 the minister. And for me, I don't see the, the line between embarrassing the minister and probing for the good of Sierra Leone because the minister is an appointee of government. Whereas I, as a member of parliament, am an elected official of this country. So I don't see when somebody is telling me that you're embarrassing this person. If, there has, if there's anybody that should be embarrassed at any point, it should be an elected official because the appointed officer is to serve. So, so, so uh, um, I mean, I, I've had arguments being advanced that um, Honorable Ibrahim Tawa, who was the chairman of the Transparency Committee in Parliament, was being very deliberate in probing or asking the, the tough questions that we are asking um, to the Minister of Information because you were in bed with um, the the head of uh, Salkab, you were his pal. So you were surviving through um, Salkab as against the Ministry of Information and Communication. So it was deliberate. You wanted to just expose the, 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 the minister or the Ministry of Information so that it suits your, your, your bedfellow. Well, good as it is, um, posterity judges people from either positive or negative light. Today, as we sit, we have a hundred and something staff of Salkab that are out of job. When the minister was in parliament, he said nobody will lose his job. When he left parliament, when he met with when he met Salkab, the staff of Salkab, he modified it that nobody will lose his job needlessly. And I was trying to prevent a calamity that was and is still waiting to happen. Which is? Which is Salkab being unbundled without following due process, Salkab being unbundled at the expense of the people of Sierra Leone. Because if you look at currently what is happening at Salkab, you have a company called Zulab that does not even have a financial, uh, audited financial statements. You cannot imagine that, that we are a country alone is giving an asset that has a liability of $105 million to a company that does not have one year audited financial. Even a bank cannot give a loan to such a company, a bank, a small entity. Currently, the, the paid up share capital for banks in Sierra Leone is $30 billion. Yeah? $30 billion is not even up to the risk assets of Salkab. But that bank with that limited risk asset or that paid off share capital at the central bank, that the central bank keeps stressing that you must meet. If you don't meet, you close shop. A bank cannot give a loan to a company like Zublab because they don't have one year audited financial. But a country like Sierra Leone would prefer to give an asset as big as Salkab to a company that was registered three years ago. And people claim that the bid for the advertisement of the award of that contract mm -hmm. was done as an international competitive bidding. Where is Zulab? Zulab was registered in Sierra Leone. What did they say in their own profile? They said they have a satellite office at Fort Lauderdale in Florida. So it means they have no presence outside Sierra Leone. What they, what they have in, 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 in Florida is like a post box. It's like a post box that if you have a letter for Zulab, because you know the people that are running Zulab in Sierra Leone, please drop my letter there. My friend at that office would either mail it or send it to a DHL. That is what I wanted to prevent. And today, we are seeing it. As I speak, there has not been an agreement table in Parliament regarding the issue of Salka. Because I was just going to ask, when you say Salka, I mean, the unbundling is taking place without due processes and all of that, then what is Parliament doing? Because um, 
cabinet has approved, according to um, the minister, then what is parliament doing to ensure that um, the due processes are followed? Because you have to do oversight functions. You have to, to, um, do over, to oversight those institutions and see whether or not they are meeting the demands. And if not, you, you, you have to call them back. So what is parliament doing? Well, well that's part of my trouble. My trouble is, Tawa is calling parliament out. Hmm. Why am I calling parliament out? The, the problem of our country sits with one institution, Parliament. They have enormous powers. The Constitution has given Parliament enormous responsibility, unending responsibility, unending powers. Even if you look at the limited provisions that Parliament have under 93, 97, and 105 to make law, to represent, and to, to oversee, even that Parliament cannot do effectively. Because if you're talking about processes, yeah, mm. you start first with the fact that when I called them, yeah. Parliament could not allow us to investigate the issue. That is first a misnomer. Misnomer number two. At the time when the minister was saying he had a uh, cabinet approval, the constitution gives parliament the power. Even if you have cabinet approval, I cannot remember whether it's section 60 or I cannot remember the exact section. Mm -hmm. But between 60, 61, around that area, yeah, gives parliament the power to investigate any approval even granted by cabinets and see whether that approval is within the confines of meeting uh, Section 20 of the Public Financial Management Act. That is responsible financial management, the principle of responsible financial management. Yeah? If you're spending money or if you're issuing out an agency without following the process, as we speak today, Zulab has taken over as SALCAP. Mm. Let's put it at December. Yeah? Let's put it at December. Say Zulab took over in December. Where is the agreement? Has the, has the agreement gone been, been tabled in parliament? No. What is happening there? What are they using? They promised to invest $12 million. How much have they bought? This is three months. How much have they invested? Nothing. What are they using? They are using the assets of SALCAP. So people misunderstanding Tawa's position for the defense of the legacy of President Bill and standing with the manifesto of the SLPP and relationship or whatever they perceive as friendship with Kibe is completely different. And the par parliament allowed me to investigate SALCAP the way I wanted. They should have seen that even the current management, I was to look at their financials. I, if I requested their financials, their procurement documents, their procurement arrangements, and their structure, their, their lease, even the leases they've done for all their outlets, mm -hmm. be it a, 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 a substation, be it current office, be it past office, because I wanted to know whether they were using government money judiciously. Because as per the Public Financial Management Act, Section 15, for SOEs like that, gives the power for the management, efficient and effective management of the finances of that agency mm. to the vote controller. And the vote controller is KB. And we called uh, 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 Ishmael KB and the South Cap team to parliament together with the chairman. But I was told by the deputy leader and the leader that KB should not make a statement. Is that a fair investigation? No. Does that mean I'm supporting KB? No. I wanted to know. And a fair investigation is give both parties chance to make their statements. And you will deduce from what you have, what you have investigated yourself, and what they are saying, and know who is right, or who is wrong, or what is good, and what is bad. As it is today, if you look at the agreement that was drafted yeah, by NPPA, the agreement in Special Clause 9 says, Zula will take the asset, but they will not take their liability. So for so me, who takes the liability? The, government the liability goes to the government of Sierra Leone. And what Zula will be contributing by the letter from the Ministry of Finance would not be enough to offset even the, 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 the interest on the loans that SALCAB has and SALCAB will be paying over time. So for me, if you cannot allow me to do that job, yeah, if you cannot allow me to do what I want to do in light with meeting my constitutional responsibility, then I see no reason why I, I can sit in any committee and allow myself to be untwisted and being told what to do, how to do it, when I know what you are telling me it's not in the interest of country, it's not in the interest of anybody. So the best I do is protect my integrity, live up to my expectation, and move forward. To date, since I resigned, I was committed to the Committee on Ethics and Privileges. As I speak, there have been two petitions against me. 
by the leadership of the SAP I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. I'm also um, of the view, well, someone from parliament, I have close friends in parliament who've told me um, decisions they are contemplating on and how to implement those decisions against Honorable Himba Imtawa. But let's go back to the resignation. Should you have resigned? Because many people, again, would, um, would want to say, no, on, uh, Honorable Ibrahim Tawa should not have resigned. He should have um, stood up. He should have continued um, to hold the fort and ensure that um, the things he, he was pushing for are achieved. But um, resigning means giving way to, um, to the very people who you are accusing of um, stifling you, of muscling you, to have their way, which, according to you, that way is not the way for um, a better transformed society. Can I say this? Mm. Can I say that what I was doing was purely for country? And sitting there, acting like a puppet, and assuming that, yes, I am standing in and facing up with the challenges, and these challenges are will surmount, and I know these challenges are insurmountable because the people that have built that castle, they are difficult to break. Mm. It is a team within a team. So it is a difficult challenge. So I looked at it. First of all, I had firstly issued an order as a committee, the Committee on Transparency and Accountability, mm -hmm. led by me at the time, issued an order. After we had investigated um, 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 enemy and uh, 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 King O and the award of the, the King O license, mm -hmm. we said King O should not do anything until the issues raised by the Mineral Advisory Board, yeah, that is knowing the shareholders of King O, seeing the financial statements of King O, and understanding the relationship between the current King O and other King O's that were registered six years ago that could not do anything, that wrote a letter to the NMA that for six years they have not started operation because they could not attract dependable investors. Yeah? That was not mis that was not our speaking. That was the media advisory board that said that. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that, look at the media advisory board's uh, minutes paper and the recommendations of the minister. And I said, okay, based on this, and all the other things that we realized that the act says any company that wants to take up uh, ventures like this should have a strong financial statement. Even geo, 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 geo geophysics or, or, or uh, the company that did the, 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 the the geographical analysis mm -hmm. for them recommended that for the running of the mines, a company that is going to take the mines needs fifty million dollars every month. And the account statement that was submitted by Kingo says from HSBC Hong Kong, the, it, it, it's showing fifty-one million Hong Kong dollars. That is about eight hundred thousand United States dollars. And we issued an order on Kingo that Kingo should not pro proceed until we verify that all of these T's and I's are dotted and crossed well. What happened? The leadership, the same leadership of parliament led by the leader of government business, all the senior parliamentarians, the honorable Asansi, the other senior parliamentarians from Tonkolili, mm -hmm. they went to the handing over ceremony of King O. Shows the committee does not have weight. Yeah? Second, let's come to Salkar. Mm -hmm. Adai Ajon, as proposed by or as suggested to me by the leader of government business in the meeting that we that was as part of the twisting process. Mm -hmm. That okay, you are embarrassing the minister. Go and adjourn. This is not how it's been done. This is not how people used to do it. When you come here, I say this is that was why the people voted against those that we are doing it the wrong way. So if I had adjourned the meeting, like I adjourned and resigned, it means that would have been the end of the Ministry of Information coming to the Committee on Transparency. And the people of Sierra will be looking at Honorable Tawada since he said, since he adjourned. The, the, the issue of Salkab. Salkab has not come again. Ministry of uh, Information has not come again. So he has been compromised. So even what we are seeing is just a, a, a act, play, and scene. So instead of this misconception, it is best to move out and let those that are used to playing the drama or used to acting it, let them continue to act it the way they are acting it. Because a die adjourn and adjourn to an indefinite date. And people, especially AYV, whom I thought at the time, and still believe that was helping the country and was helping me because they were helping the committee and helping the country to know exactly what parliament is doing and what parliament will do in the future. And it will be live on here that the Honorable Butawa and the Committee on Transparency, together with the Committee on Information, are joined to continue the investigation. And people would have tasted the juicy parts of the meat. Mm. So if the meat does not come again, it means the giver of the meat has collected something from behind the scene. And I did not want that position. I don't want to be in that position. And I come here and begin, why, why haven't you called Salka? And I begin to find ex ex excuses. So the best to do at the time was to step aside, resign from the committee, and allow them to continue the play as it is. You, you, you are being called, I mean, based on 
um, that position and also calling out Parliament. Um, by the way, you're not the only one who've called out Parliament. Um, in the previous edi um, edition of the show, I have Honorable Dr. Kande Yumkela saying Parliament, um, by omission, um, is aiding and abetting corruption or uh, account um, issues around accountability and things like that because the Parliament is not doing what it is supposed to do. And he said he has moved motion even to debate the audit report and all of that. But based on those decisions and you taking up the stance, um, you've been called to the um, Ethics and Privileges Committee and you've been asked to, to, to apologize and retract your statement. Why haven't you done that? So that you can have your seat back. Why should I do that? I did not do anything wrong. I, I, I'm a human being, a grown-up and matured adult. How can I apologize for doing nothing? Is it that I want to appease the, 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 the leadership because they said I should apologize? No, I did not do anything. What I did was purely within my powers, was purely within the powers given to me by both the standing orders and the constitution. So had I apologized, it would have meant that, it would have meant that me calling out parliament, that parliament did not utilize monies disbursed to them in 2018 and 2019 for oversight was a lie. Had I I, I apologize. It would have meant that me calling out Parliament, that the clerk, the controller, vote controller of Parliament, had not been using monies disbursed to Parliament for their intended uh, purpose was a lie. It means even the audit report that was a follow-up motion was moved by the Honourable Dr. Kandi Omkela. The initial motion for the first time in the history of this country, when the, the 2018 report was tabled in December, I stood up and I told the Speaker that this must not go unnoticed because Section, subsection 5 of section 119 of the Constitution of, of the 1991 Constitution of Sierra Leone says that Parliament shall, it is not a mail, Parliament shall debate the report of the Auditor General and the recommendations from that debate can be referred to a committee therein. As it is now, Parliament has constituted that committee to be the committee on public account, mm. but there is no mention of the public account in that provision, in that section, yeah? So I told the speaker that I'm moving a motion for this report to be debated. I followed it up with a formal motion. I sent it to the office of the clerk, copied the speaker, copied the leader of government business at the time. It was honorable CD Tunis. And I continued to remind in the chamber and even here on, uh, in this studio. I have been at the AYV studio severally. I have reminded parliament. I have called parliament's attention. And there was a time I came here in the morning on that very day, Parliament was uh, um, uh, Parliament was in session. Mm. I went to Parliament day after, and the Speaker said, "The way I am going, I am I am not f exhausting all the the alternative in Parliament." I said, "I have exhausted all the options in Parliament. I have submitted the motion formally." And in the final analysis, when the issue was raised again by the person that seconded the motion, I seconded that motion, the Honourable Baiko, the Chairman of the PAC said, "The motion moved by me, seconded by him in December." The session in which that motion was moved has elapsed. That was what moved the Honorable Kani Yomikela to do a follow-up motion, to move another motion seconded by the Honorable Asan Sisi. But to date, we have not seen a debate on the Auditor General Report. Yesterday, yeah, the Auditor General Report was cast in stone, was the best document we have in Sierra Leone. Today, we are seeing people in the eh, 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 PAC calling the Auditor General's report a mere opinion. So why can't you allow us to debate that mere opinion so that the public understand that the Auditor General's uh, 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 report is just a mere opinion. It does not, it, she is not following the process. Only the people understand that the MDAs are the one not following the process. Because if I could remember hmm. vividly, yeah, um, Paul Masakoy, the former P procurement manager also from S uh, 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 my time, was charged to cause by the ACC. And I looked at the, 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 the... And that's as a result from findings from the a, audit report? As a result, it, one, findings from the audit reports, that's one. And secondly, the provisions that we are quoted that he did not follow were all provisions in the Public Financial Management Act and the Anti Corruption Act. It means if you fail to follow the process as laid out in the law, it means you are either attempting to perpetrate corruption or you have already uh, 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 conducted an activity in a corrupt way. And that is what the audit report is bringing to us. So why can't we debate it in public? So for me, these are the issues that I see has no bearing with me apologizing. Why should I apologize? If I apologize now, forget about all the other issues I've raised about the audit report, about the issue of unaccountable impress. It means I did not believe 
in what I am saying. And I believe in what I say every day because whatever I say, I say in the interest of Sierra Leone, I say in the interest of this president, and I say in the interest of protecting his legacy and defend the manifesto of the SLPP. Don't forget that what the people used to assess us as a party was what we put out in public. And what we put out in public at the time was our manifesto. And the people read our manifesto, even the illiterates that do not understand the manifesto from the reading point of view, understand the messages that we put out on radios, on television, break it down, that we are going to fight corruption, that we are going to implement the, all these recommendations. And in four different areas, go to page 56, 57, 58, and 59, it is clear that we said part of the problem in that manifesto for accountability in Sierra Leone is because parliament is not doing its job. And I, and I wanted to take you on that. Now that you're calling out parliament to ensure that it takes up its responsibility with the required seriousness to help fix the issues of accountability and transparency in Sierra Leone. I have friends in the Ethics and Privileges Committee in Parliament, and um, they've told me in confidence um, that we, we've, we've recommended to the, the House that um, Honorable Ibrahim Tawakonte should apologize to the House. Um, but the, this very leadership you're, you're saying is now, um, of course, was trying to um, muscle your, you when you were chairman of that um, transparency committee. They, they, they want um, the Honorable Ibrahim Tawakonte out of parliament because he's, uh, he is, he's destroying moves for, for, for the parliament. He's trying to bring the name of parliament into disrepute by calling out parliament for these things. So um, they were advised to go and recommend that he should be expelled from, from, from parliament. I mean, he should be taken out because you, 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 you're a bad egg within parliament. And so that, so that is why you're very close to the door, by the way. <laughs> I mean... But things like this, when they go on, how do, how do you survive with that very strong force, especially when the leadership of parliament is made up of members of your own very party, the SLPP? Well, in difficult times, in challenging times, when even the people of Israel had to face challenges in trying to move out of bondage from Egypt, mm -hmm. even within themselves, they quarreled. Even within themselves, what they wanted was expeditious actions. But Moses was angry, he went to, to God and said, I'm tired of leading these people. These people are quarreling. These people don't understand what I'm doing. And in two words, the Lord said, stand firm. In two words, he said, stand firm. So can I bring that to myself? In all of this debacle, in all of this forcing the Committee on Ethics to recommend that they include, if I don't apologize, I will be expelled. It is not within their powers to go beyond asking me to apologize. That is what the Constitution says, Section 99. 99 says when a matter referred to them, they would have to probe that matter. And in fact, 99.2 says, a matter referred to the Committee on Ethics and Privileges shall, shall, not more than 30 days, be investigated and a report table in Parliament. As I speak today, we are into 120, 22, 22. So it is unconstitutional. Even the report is unconstitutional in the first place. That is one. Number two, 99 is three or four. Further says that having investigated the matter, the committee should ask if the member is guilty of making a prima facie or defamatory statement, should ask that member to apologize. And the member accept in the committee. That member will now come and the committee would prepare an apology for the member to read in the chamber. So in the instance, they have asked me in the committee to apologize. I said no. So it means they have no other option is to bring their recommendation to the chamber that he should apologize. And it's up to me now, if I have denied in, at the committee stage, to come in the chamber and say, okay, I'm sorry. But that will not happen. So the constitution for that says, if the committee recommends apology, and I refuse to apologize, I should be suspended for the remainder of the session. The remainder of the session is one month, for now. The next session starts in April. The next session starts when presidents prorogue and formally bring the state of the opening address. And that will be somewhere around April 25th or so. So it means the Leadership of the SIPP in Parliament haven't that power 
to expel me. They've tried it. They've written two petitions to the party, asked that I should be expelled for reasons best known to them, for reasons that, is, that are not in favor of Sierra Leone, or for reasons that you said that, okay, I've been deemed as the bad egg because I have failed to cooperate in aiding and abating corruption. I cannot. I cannot aid and abate corruption. If we have said that the previous government was corrupt, but we wanted a system wherein it should be 10 years of corruption, perpetration of corruption, and I called parliament out, I would have been the bad egg. Because the people understand that, yes, this is a system, and that system will have told them that this is how it has been run. And because it should not be, be one person collecting everything, let, it, let people know that, yes, yeah, it's a corrupt system. But it's 10 years, 10 years of A coming and corrupt, 10 years of B coming and corrupt. But we said this system was corrupt. We initiated the commission of inquiry. We set up a full commission, three commissions. And those commissions, they produced a report, and that report was validated as per constitution by the president referring it to the attorney general, asking all those named persons who were recommended in that that, by, that by the commissions to pay or forfeit as the case may be. So for me, it means we believed in fighting corruption. And throughout my, this president's mm -hmm. presidency, he had spoke in every statement on fighting corruption. And if there is anybody that has demonstrated belief, commitment, and a, a valor in the words of the president in parliament, there has been one person that has done that. And that one person is Tawa. So asking to expel Tawa from parliament, it means you're asking to expel the president's agenda out of parliament. Let, let, let me ask you this question. Does Parliament have the moral grounds to actually probe into issues of corruption at this point in time? They don't. When in the words of um, Honorable Indolo Gevao, Parliament is corrupt. When in the words of Honorable Kande um, Yumkela, by omission, Parliament is aiding and abetting corruption. When in the words of the people of this country, in both the Afrobarometer report um, published by its partner, the Institute for Governance Reform, and also another report from um, the Center for Accountability and Rule of Law, Parliament is deemed the second most corrupt institution in this country. How then can Parliament probe into issues of corruption, into issues of accountability and transparency, especially when for, for, for years Parliament has not even debated the audit report um, presented to it by the Audit Service Sierra Leone, so um, dating back, if, if I stand to be corrected, 2016 or so. Uh, the, the point is, I think the best word to use for parliament is that parliament is best, not only the fifth parliament, mm. but both the fourth, third, and parliament, successive parliament before the fifth parliament. The fifth parliament is just compounding all the actions of those mm. other parliaments that have been before it. Parliament is best described as corroborating in the act of perpetrating corruption with the MDs. Mm. That is, they corroborate. Because if parliament has an oversight function, and these MDs, Every ministry has an oversight committee in parliament. And the auditor, how many, how many staff does the auditor general has? I'm sure they don't have up to 112, say for the last session, the last parliament, fourth parliament, mm -hmm. they had 112 members. This parliament have 132 members, yeah? And each committee, each committee has 16 members of parliament. And every MD is assigned to one oversight committee. And if parliament that is making these laws that the Auditor General is using to see violation in the MDs, and Parliament cannot see that, then I think all of the instances that you cited, both the, the one by Carl, the one from the people, the one by the Honorable uh, uh, Kande Kolem Kela, the pronouncements by the Honorable Indoro Geva, although he has said, sorry for that, that he did not mean it that way, it was only reaffirming an opinion of Carl. He has apologized for that. But I still hold the view that Parliament has been complacent to corruption in this country because Parliament has enormous power. So coming to your question, does Parliament have the moral high ground to investigate corruption? Well, by the government, yes, by the Constitution. The Constitution gives the Parliament that power to look at, to oversee, and ensure that they, 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 they bring out uh, 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 misnomers because Parliament is not only guided by the Constitution. Acts of Parliament are products of the Constitution. So it is Parliament that also uh, 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 produce or generates or pass Acts of Parliament into law. So it means added to the Constitution, all of this burden 
sit with parliament. They are the, the, the goalkeeper for protecting their own laws. So if they cannot protect their laws and people are abusing their laws outside, and those people, they come to them either as oversight or in appropriation. Don't forget that the budget does, you don't approve the budget, the minister presents and you say approve, no. After the presentation, you go through the budget with the minister, you have to bring the MDs, you investigate their spending, how they have used allocated funding granted to them for the previous years, and ensure that if they have used, used or utilized those monies allocated to them properly, give them another money. So if the, the auditor is seeing procurement anomalies, I have seen a committee in parliament, I will not call the ministry anyway, I have seen a committee in parliament, I was not part of the committee, I was part of that committee in the first session, mm -hmm. but because of my critical nature of looking at that particular ministry again, the next set up of the committee for our the opposition, committee. Our opposition committee, I was removed. I was sent to one committee that was looking at NC R, uh, uh, Human Rights Commission, those ones that are given 1.5 billion, but in, in actual fact, what they will receive from the budget allocation is 200 million. So even them themselves, they can find it very difficult to manipulate it. Although even them, they can find ways of making out figures. So I was removed from my committee, but out of curiosity, after their work, I went to the, the, the committee room and look at some of the documents and I picked out one document and I saw one ministry yeah, buying air tickets to go to Indonesia at 119 million 540,000 leos. That is about $12,000. Even if you want to sit at the top of the plane, there's no <laughs> ticket they will sell it to you for $12,000. So if parliaments cannot see that, but the original can see that, then it is obvious that on morality, parliament should not investigate the MDs. Because parliament is, is dropping the ball. But on the government, the government has given them that power. And the constitution supersedes everything because in our elementary governments, we are taught to believe that the constitution is the body of law and usages that control the workings of the organs of government and the rights and duties of individual citizens. So it is that body, it is that document that controls everything in the mm -hmm. state. So that, body, that document has given the powers to parliament. But on the moral ground, parliament should just be a collaborating partner in aiding the MDs to perpetrate corruption. Earlier on, you mentioned um, that you've called uh, the clerk of parliament, you've called him out for um, uh, the parliament received um, money for oversight function for 2018, 2019 that did not take place. And that begs the question, when some of these committees want to go on oversight functions, they have to go back to those MDs, they are going to um, investigate, they are going to probe into their activities to finance their activities i mean that is clear to finance the activities to go i mean I'll, I'll call you i mean buy you fuel and give you launch or, 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 or dsa to come and investigate what, what i am doing and um when that again is being provided for in your budget how does that work why where, where, where where does um where would you put that on a scale of corruption saying i mean i'm, I'm being budgeted for for for, for to undertake this particular activity, and I'm asking you again to give me money to go and perform that same function. Well, I, I want to maybe be devil's advocate in this particular go issue. Ahead. The issue is, it, it does not mean because we are friends, myself and Samia, mm -hmm. or because we attended the same school, we are coming from the same Alma Mesa Services Secondary School, so that the people know that both of us are coming from <laughs> the same school anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, of it does not mean that because of all of these connections or this affinity, mm -hmm. if Samuel does something wrong, I should not call him out. I should yeah. call him out. There is nothing wrong. Yeah. Even my brother, blood brother, if he's doing something wrong, I will tell him that this is wrong and I will call him out publicly. Mm. Yeah? I have been doing some restructuring and working as super with the administration of services. We were in a meeting. Somebody was introducing herself and somebody remarked sarcastically and I called that person out. The person thought, oh, you're picking on me. I said, I'm not picking on you. If somebody did the same thing to you, I would call that person out because I know it is not right. So for me, first of all, money is given for oversight in 2018 and 2019. No oversight was done. Yeah. That is established. Yeah, there was no oversight. Now, coming to the issue of even if the money were given to the MPs, yeah, each committee, it's, this year, each committee was given 60 million for oversight. 60 million cannot conduct an effective oversight. You have to be very honest. 60 million cannot conduct an effective oversight. So if they go to the MDs, that does not restrict them from investigating the MDs thoroughly. It means the MDs want, because even they themselves, for example, I was chairman for environment, and EPA supported us, the Environment Committee, yeah, because they themselves cannot cover all of 
the, 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 the agencies or the institutions they're supervising. And during that period, because of they supported us and we're an effective committee, we helped EPA to recollect monies for e institutions that we are supposed to have been on EIA licenses, but they were operating without, without EIA license. They had to find each of them five, 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 five thousand dollars. So if EPA had given us 50 million, yeah, and we have in the process of doing our oversight, supported EPA with collecting over $25,000. Had we done anything wrong? No. Does that not help to weaken the institutions? Take, for example, let's say the EPA um, supported the Environment Committee with, um, with money that they did not budget for when making um, budget um, presentations. No, to they the are ministry. budgeting for, for, for supervision. Go ahead. Every ministry has a supervi supervi uh, supervi supervi supervision budget. Okay. And in that supervision budget, it is either they choose to bring in a third party that will help them in the process. Like it, the committees like in parliament. Like the committees in parliament or maybe agencies or mm -hmm. any institution, any third party can help them in doing that, in ensuring that, first of all, the institutions operating under them are within the, 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 the provisions of the law that establish that agency or they are meeting their payments, their, their statutory payments, or they are working in line or meeting the, the regulation set. Mm -hmm. But as an agency by themselves, they cannot do it all by themselves. So they can leverage on parliament that has wide ranging scope the, uh, on the pretext that you can do the work without affecting the MDA. Take for instance, the, the, the Environment Committee at the time. Mm -hmm. We helped EPA to raise up to $25,000, $30,000, yeah? Now, even if they want to replenish their supervi super, 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 supervisory budget, they can take from that because those monies, they have already written them off. They can take from that and replenish and still have monies written off as, as, as revenues. So it, it is not wrong, but what is wrong is if they are not doing the right thing in the ministry and they support parliament and parliament cannot honor the wrongs or parliament can see those wrongs, but they cannot point them out in public then it means it is money spent without any effect. So it is not unethical for the agencies. Like people say, you don't bite the fingers that feed you. No. Mm -hmm. If I get money from the Ministry of Finance to go and look at agencies around the Ministry of Finance, it does not only limit to the Ministry of Finance and its agencies. It also goes to agencies that the Ministry of Finance is awarding contracts to, so how they are executing those contracts, whether those contracts meet the specification. For example, I wanted to, to uh, investigate SLRA as Transparency Chairman. What I wanted to investigate, I wanted to confirm whether companies that are executing projects in this country, whether they have bank guarantees, advance payment guarantees, or bid security that is current to cover the exposure. Because if, for example, anything happened to the touch would anything happen, and they want to go, what's your fallback? So even if SLI had given us money to do that, but we do that work and bring out all the agencies, make it public that company A, company B, company C don't have bank guarantees, it means we have utilized money given to us wisely. How bad do you think, I mean, as a nation, we need to fix this fifth parliament? Um, with all the things hanging around it, um, making it look so ugly at this point? As a nation, like I said, I have been going to places and I've had some people, they write off situation. Mm. And I see this fifth parliament as the first attempt to remedy the problem in the fifth parliament. It's for the fifth parliament to be willing and open to accept criticism. It is but not fitting for parliament, after a perception of a perception, mm -hmm. to someone a press conference, threatening, calling people terrorists, telling them that they are subverted, they will be taken to, to this committee, or they will pursue them legally. They must have to accept criticism first, because nobody is perfect. Mm. It is a way, it is a path. It might not be 100 percent this use parliament. Mm -hmm. It might be actions of other parliaments Parliament. mm. that is trickling down to the fifth parliament. But the fifth parliament in itself has also demonstrated those same traits exhibited by the former parliament. And we are entering the fourth session of the fifth the parliament fifth of the Second Republic. Mm -hmm. 
So we have not fixed it in session one, session two, <laughs> session three, and now we're entering the fourth session. And in the fourth session, mostly from what I've heard from other colleagues that were in parliament before, that is when parliament becomes a little tough for both parties because it becomes political now. Yeah. Everybody wants to show that his political party is working, people will begin to criticize. Like you're seeing now, mm. people that we are not interested in Kingo, they started calling out Kingo is doing this, Kingo is doing that. Politics is playing now. You see people that are not interested when I moved the motion for the debate of the, the general report in December 2018. We are interested in October, to, in September 2019, 2020. Because we are approaching 2023. 2023 is coming. So in fixing the, the, fixed, the fixed parliament, I'm sure, firstly, we have missed the opportunity, I have to be very honest. Mm. When I say we have missed the opportunity, not the people of this country, the people of this country provided the platform by ensuring that 75% of members of parliament that we are either in the fourth parliament or other parliament did not return to parliament. They brought in 75% new members of parliament, young people, the problem did not fix. Because not too many of them has the guts, has the moral timber like the president would say, to stand up and say, it is not right without being partisan. That it is not right without trying to protect your political party, other than the people of Sierra Leone. So because of the lack of that coordination, and I've tried, I have tried several, I have gone to colleagues, I've tried to set up parliamentary uh, committee for Sierra Leone, I've called it different names, I've brought in people from both parties that work together and stand up for what is right. But it is difficult. So the people of Sierra Leone have created the platform, they provided the platform, but that platform has not worked. So what I will say is this, there is still hope, there is still belief, but what we have to do is, from the top, between the executive and the, and, and the legislature, they have to be open enough to say things that has and deals with accountability, whether it affects my brother, my tribesman, my clansman, my regional brother, my blood brother. If it is not right, it is not right. You have to face the music. But because continuously we see actions of the civil service as connected to the progress of government, we protect them either because of that connection or because of the nexus between us and the person that is doing it. For example, what happened in the Salka debacle, yeah, it was purely something of somebody wants to protect this person because he's either a minister or I know him or he's coming from the same area that we are coming from. So you think you want to embarrass him, you don't embarrass him. Somebody called that, oh, he should not embarrass the minister. Hey, you are a minister, you are responsible for an agency. I ask you a question. If you don't answer the question, then you have embarrassed yourself. How can I embarrass you with a simple question? I cannot. If you don't answer the question, it's like you, go, you, you study for an examination, and you go to the examination, the questions we are put to you, and you cannot answer the question. The teacher gives you what you deserve. He said, the teacher gave me zero. But you have embarrassed yourself. You have failed to answer the question. So for me, it is all of these factors that we have to remove for the fifth parliament or successive parliament to be fixed. But if we don't change that mentality, that it is our opportunity, if I'm chairman, I should make use of the chairmanship for myself and forget about the masses, then we cannot fix. And if we don't fix parliaments, let it be on record and let it be on the mind of the people of this country. If we don't fix parliaments, we cannot fix it. There, there was so much hope, so much zest, enthusiasm that um, the fifth parliament was going to get things right, was going to, was going to bring um, restock confidence in the governance structure of this country. But from the look of things, the fifth parliament can be compared to the fourth, the third, or the second parliament of the Republic of Sierra Leone. Would the people of Sierra Leone be safe to say the fifth parliament is full of deceitful um, disciples, people who came to them, um, promised things that they are going to fix this country? Because Umar Fofana usually, um, usually um, tells people that um, if parliament is fixed, our problems will be fixed, Sierra Leone will be fixed. So, would Sierra Leoneans be safe to describe the House of Parliament as a house of deceitful disciples? Well, like they are pushing currently under the Local Government Act <clears throat> that they should depoliticize the council. The council. You know, I have had different views from people in political parties that mm -hmm. government wants to use it to arm twist, government wants to use it to control the local council. But I tell you, that is one of the ways to go. Mm. You know why? Tell me. In my constituency, I have three councillors. All three of them are from the opposition. I have tried several to work with them for the people. 
There are times one of them, we started to work together. He was called by his party that, oh, you're working with him, you're giving him fame. We are going to remove this. He had to, back, he had to, back, to move back. back. Hmm. So for me, and currently I'm doing 16 toilets um, facility at a place called Korea Compound, where the council or leaves, the council or stays there. And these people haven't had a toilet for over 20 years. They are using one dog pit that was um, used as a quarry. Everybody was connecting his waste pipe where mm -hmm. he would deposit his feces and whatever to that uh, 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 dog hole. And the, 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 the stench makes the place very uncomfortable. You cannot sit outside. And since I started mm -hmm. that project sometime around November, December, to date I'm completing now. I'm sure by next week I would hand over the remainder and all 16 years. Yeah? The councillor is staying there. He has never for once come and say, eh, what is happening? You know why? It's because he's seeing it that, okay, this honorable is in the SLTP, SLTP and I'm in the APC. Because I don't have the muscle, I've not been able to bring either the mayor or my successive MPs that were in my party together. I haven't done it. So if I come there, it's like I'm validating that he's doing a good job. It is the same for parliament. I believe that parliament can be fixed with independent minds. Even if we have political party, what we have to do is, as people like the opposition leader is saying, oh, we have to support the president, and there's nobody in their parliament that has supported the president more than I do. The opposition leader has said, we have to support the president. The president has made a pronouncement regarding the 76, the dual citizenship. Yes. I am for it 100%. That we remove dual citizenship and give people a free hand. Why should I be afraid? If I'm doing a good job alone, they come from Russia. Once come to a contest, I'll beat you. Because I know I'm doing a good job. I know you have been in Russia for four years. I've been in Constituency 132 for four years. I have an organic relationship with my people. So you cannot break that in one year. Even if you bring the money from the World Bank, they will eat, some will go. But the greater uh, 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 multitude will stay because they believe that it is not now, it is future. We have seen what he's doing and we know he will do more. So let me ask. So for me, let me just finish this point. For me, I'm supporting that particular removal on the basis that we remove 77 k from the Constitution. Maybe if we remove that, some people will have the... Because as I sit now, the SLPP, parliament leadership cannot expel me. They cannot remove me. They don't have the powers. Ethics committee cannot. Yeah, especially when the report that they are relying on is unconstitutional. So, so the party has the power. The party has the power. The party can revoke my membership. And if they revoke my membership that I have lost my membership, I can be removed from parliament by the speaker. But I know the SLPP I have been in. My father was APC. My father has been APC. I was, I was under his roof and I was SLPP. And I have never moved. I have had people say, oh, so I was in the APC before. He has moved over to the SLPP. I have never been APC in my life, my entire life. <laughs> my father was APC. I will say it in public. Mm -hmm. I have never been APC in my entire life. I have contested for the symbol in 2012 for the SLPP. I worked with Aya to Aya to in 2007. I was in the party as a member when we were jumping and dancing for Tijan Kaba. So I have never been APC. But the SLPP I have been in, they know that what the SLPP believes, the values of the SLPP, is to stand for Sierra Leone. And I am doing that. So there is no way the SLPP leadership would remove my membership because they know I am a very good member. And I have demonstrated that both within parliament and in my constituency. You can find few members of parliament that can relate with their constituents as best as I do. So. If we are bringing a constitutional amendment for 76, let us amend 77 Wanki. Maybe that will give so other people the free will, would reduce, and people will begin to talk about these things openly. Let, let me, as we round up, let me now ask you this question. I mean, the conversation has been quite intense. Uh, on a lighter note, let's go to what have you been doing in your constituency? What are the things in terms of development? During campaigns, people, um, people will say, oh, members of parliament come, they promise us um, this and that. But when they go to parliament, they start telling us that their job is not to develop the constituency. Their job is to just perform oversight functions, make laws and represent them in parliament. Fundamental um, mandates given by the constitution. But what have you been doing in your constituency? What are the things you've done? Can I say 97 that gives us the power to Section 97 that gives us the power to represent does not prescribe exactly what representation means. And for me, if you say representation is like a pronoun, yeah, you are Abdul in the noun form, and in the pronoun form you are he. So the pronoun takes the place of a noun. So in the instance, I am saying the constituents, yeah, they are the noun. I am the pronoun. 
So if they are not there, I should take their place. So I am acting for on behalf. I'm representing them. So whatever they desire, whatever I desire for myself, should be good for them. And in terms of development in my constituency, I think the list is endless. In fact, I have over-delivered <laughs> things that I did not even promise I have given. I did not promise to build a school. I have built a multi-story school, 15 classroom, at Freetown Road, number nine. It is called number nine comprehensive. It was formally opened by His Excellency the President. I did not promise building a school hall and a pavilion and the refurbishment of services at secondary school. I've done that. I've built the retired brigade at Julius Mara Bill Great Hall and Services. I did not promise refurbishing the Lomley Market. I have refurbished, I have changed all the zinc, I have redesigned the market, uh, 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 built in new market tables for our market women. I have done that. I did not promise putting or fixing the bridge at Lokotong. I have fixed it at Kanigo. I have fixed another bridge at uh, 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 Porto. Yeah? I have done a series of roads. I have done 188 meters of roads at Grassville Lomley. I have done another 80 meters of roads at Dekali. They are all visible. They are there to see. I have done 314 meters of road at Kanigo. I have done another 210 meters of road at Kondifa. And currently, or before that, I have done or refurbished and redesigned 16 toilet buildings at Juba. And I'm currently doing another 16 at Kolia Compound. Kolia Compound holds about 400 plus people. That is in addition to all of the other things. So the list is endless. The list is just endless. Some of the things I cannot even remember. Because for me, it is about not only saying because of politics, but it should be part of your heart. Where do you get the money? Because members of parliament complain that even the, 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 the constituency development for now um, changed to facilitation fee. It's, it's not even enough to even get an office space for them. Yet to talk about undertaking um, infrastructural development activities like the ones you've mentioned. Where do you get your, the money? Two things that comes to mind. First, one of the responsibilities of representation is to lobby. Yeah? If you have nobody is in parliament, except for a few people that are in parliament that have not worked before. I have been in the private sector before. I have known so many people. I have worked with so many people. I have been account officer for so many agencies that I have never in my life cheated. So I am running on that image now to get support. That is one. Number two, what comes from parliament, it's small, yes, but it is useful if you can transform it. Don't forget the, the parable of uh, uh, the people that uh, uh, went to Jesus. Jesus gives 10 to somebody. He did not make anything out of it. I think they, he gives five to another person. He did not make anything out of it. The man that was given one came back to him and said, Lord, I have transformed that one to six. So for me, whatever little that comes to you as parliamentary, you must have the heart for your people. What we receive now as facilitation fee, yeah? Even what was given then as constituency development for that the speaker said we should use to construct, 69 million cannot construct an office, cannot even construct a single home, self-contained. Everybody knows that in Sierra Leone. The cost of building material is so high that 69 million cannot construct even a single home, self-contained. But for me, in the budget, it was called Constituency Development Fund. So you speaker and clerk come into radio and popularize that it is for building of offices. How can I build an office as a lawmaker? I should, I should know better that the law says the only person that can change the budget code under subsection two, uh, sub regulation two of regulation nine of the public financial management regulation of 2018, it is the financial sector, it is the accountant general under the warrant of the financial sector. So how can the pronouncement by the speaker amount to law? It, does, it is not lawful. So for me, that money... It's still constituency development it, I used it for, it was part of the monies that I put together, together with what I lobbied from uh, uh, other people that built that school at number nine. Yeah? And the other facilities, I am still lobbying. As I speak today, I am still lobbying somebody, an agency, a very good, reputable business in this country that has given me a positive green light to support me in building or constructing a bridge at Jack Kingdom. Already, in what I have been getting, I have been putting some spin to the wheel to ensure that the process would start. So for me, it is about lobbying effectively. And for the 18 million is 72 million. It is 18 times 4, 18, 18, 36, 36, 36, 72. That is what is giving us facilitation fee. 18 million every quarter. And I receive about 4 million, 4.5 million for fuel. And that 4.5 million does not come before I buy the fuel. It comes after I have bought the fuel. So if it, is comes, if it comes after I have bought the fuel, I can still use it for other things because already I have expensed my own money on the fuel. And the fuel I use 
touch wood, mo nobody, most of these people in parliament, even if they were working, they were not receiving 21 million salary per month. Even me, at EcoBank, I was not receiving 21 million. At EcoBank, I was receiving 20 million as rent allowance. In parliament, I'm receiving almost 98 million as rent allowance. So it means the people of my constituency has changed my life. So from that changes, I should be willing to sacrifice part of it whenever it comes to make a difference in their lives as well. So it's about sacrifice and it's about commitment. Thank you very much, Honorable Ibrahim Tawa, for your time um, to grant us this interview. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And there you have it from the Honorable Member of Parliament for Constituency 132, Honorable Ibrahim Tawakonte. We've gone through the ad conversation on edited, on adulterated, on restraint, and you've got it first hand from him. Until we meet again, this show has been the interview. My name is Samuel Weisbangura. <laughs>